Hey everyone, it's Joseph from LearnSketch.com, and this morning Sketch 49 just kind of popped up out of nowhere and brought us native prototyping directly within Sketch, which means, naturally, there's some tricks, there's some shortcuts, and I've got eight of them to share with you all right now. When you open up your prototype to preview it or share it on the cloud, it's gotta open up on a screen. It's gotta have a start point. And Sketch is kind enough to allow us to set that start point. You can see here that there's a little flag next to this artboard. This is currently set as my start point. And you can do that from the prototyping menu at the top of the screen right here. You'll find use artboard as start point. The problem is that when I go to preview, it's going to start there no matter what I'm trying to look at. If I'm down here looking at profile and I want to preview what the profile screen is going to interact like, let's say I want to click around and test out some of my hotspots. Uh, if I go to preview, it brings me back to the freaking start point. It gets really annoying. So I recommend that while you're in the process of creating your prototype, disable all start points. You don't want to have a start point. So that way, when you click any object on any screen and you go to preview, it brings you to that screen. So you can click around and you can start testing your prototype from the point that you want to start testing your prototype from, rather than starting from the beginning every single time. Prototyping is definitely a way to take the product to the next level of fidelity, but it's also a way to keep yourself organized. For example, we've got a link here. When you tap on this, it's going to go to Karen Pollock's uh, profile, but I might not know where that artboard is, and I don't want to scroll around looking for it. So if you have an object selected that's been linked to a screen, you can head over to the inspector, and there's a little arrow. And if you click that arrow, it goes to the target artboard. It'll bring you directly to the artboard that that object is linked to. So you can help yourself stay organized and not have to worry about scrolling around quite as much. This next one is one of my favorites, and it's one that you've possibly found already. But if you've got a back button or a close button that's going to bring the user back to whichever screen they were on prior to this one, for example, this camera screen can be accessed from the camera button that's on a bunch of different screens. So I don't know necessarily how they got from where they were to this screen, but what I do know is that the close button is going to bring them back to wherever they were before. So if you press W to begin prototyping to create a link, uh, there's this little on object UI that is a back arrow. And if you click to link to that instead of linking to another screen, it will automatically bring you back to wherever you were when you navigated to this screen. And my favorite part, it'll automatically reverse whichever transition you used uh, to get here. So for example, if we go to profile and I'll press command P to go into my preview here, if we click on the camera icon, it does a slide up animation. And when we click close, it automatically knows to slide down. That is why this is one of my favorite little tricks, because it does work for you, so you don't have to. What could be better than that? This next one is huge. Whether you've got just one button that's repeated on a bunch of screens, or you've got a full-blown nav bar that's repeated on a bunch of screens, you probably have already turned it into a symbol so that you don't have to worry about making changes on a bunch of separate screens when all these things are really sharing one UI element. Now, with that, you can share the links between screens so that you don't have to link everything over and over and over again. You can link from the symbol one time, and then wherever that symbol is being used, the links will go with it. So if I double click to edit this symbol, and I'll press Command 2 here to zoom in, uh, I can select any button here and press W to create a link. And instead of clicking on another screen, because the only screens available to me are other symbols, you head over to this little on object UI, this little element here that looks like a, sort of an escape or outward uh, icon. Call, call it what you will. It doesn't matter. If you click on that, it comes up with a little dialog box that lets you choose which screen you want to link to. So in this case, this would go to feed. This would go to... I forget what the pages are called. Uh, comments, this would go to camera, etc., etc. And I don't need to be able to see 
the artboards in order to link to them. And most importantly, once it's done, it's done. Wherever this symbol is used, it is a done deal. Now the problem is that you can't override in case there's an exception to one of these, but stay tuned, there's another trick coming up. So by now you know that you can use a layer or a group as a link, but there is another way to link part of your screen to another screen, and that's using something called a hotspot. Fortunately, the letter H is the shortcut for hotspot, couldn't make any more sense, and if you click and drag, it'll create an area that becomes a touch target, and whatever is within that area design-wise doesn't matter, as long as this area is touched, it'll automatically link and bring you to wherever you want to go. So when I let go of the cursor, it automatically brought me into link mode, and it's waiting for me to choose a destination for this hotspot, and when I click, that is a done deal. So it allows me to do sort of a more general area and not a specific object. You might be wondering, why not just create a group, or why not just create an invisible layer that has no fill? Well, I'm glad you asked. There is something special about hotspots, and that's in the next tip. In this prototype, in addition to my bottom navigation, I also have a top navigation that is also global. It's a symbol, it's being repeated on several screens. And on that navigation bar, there is a search icon. And the search icon is linked from the symbol to this search screen here. The problem is there isn't just one search screen. This prototype is meant to demonstrate that when you click search on a screen, it shows the search bar on whatever screen you're already looking at. So this comments screen, when you click search, needs to link to this comments search screen, meaning I would need to override where this instance within this symbol links to. And as I mentioned in, I guess it was two tips ago, that you can't do that. Well, that's partially true. There is a trick though, of course, that's why we're here. So if I double click and I go into this symbol, you could see that this icon, which is a symbol itself, is currently linked out, and it's currently linked out to a specific screen. Now, that can't be overridden, but if we remove that link, and instead press H to create a hotspot. When we create a hotspot and we link that hotspot, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna link it to the same place, the explore search screen. That is where it was linked before. So, so far nothing has changed, right? But now when we go back and we select an instance of that symbol, you'll notice that now there is a hotspot override. That was not there before only hotspots show up as overrides. So now for this particular instance, for the comment screen, I can switch this to link to the comment search screen. So I am not out of luck as described in a previous tip. You can override the link for a hotspot. You cannot override the link for a normal layer. Huge, huge trick. In the previous tip, you guys saw me remove the link from the search icon and then create a hotspot from scratch and then relink it. That was probably painful to watch. That was painful for me to do, and it's not the way to do it. If you select any object, it doesn't have to be within a symbol. It can be anywhere within your design, in a symbol, on an artboard, doesn't matter. With an object selected that has a link, if you head over to the inspector, there's this prototype icon, when you click on it, it'll automatically take the selected layers and it will lift the link into a hotspot as a separate layer and then you get your overrides. If it's a symbol, you get your overrides as described in the previous tip. And you can do that without having to redraw and relink every single one. Check this out. Look at all these beautiful hotspot overrides. How cool is that? It's inevitable that if you're creating a prototype that has a lot of screens, it will become quite the bird's nest of these little orange connection lines. So this tip has eh, multiple parts to it. If you press Control F on the keyboard, it will hide away the bird's nest, so you don't have to be burdened with looking at all these things. You press it again, they come back. You can toggle back and forth. That's not so much a trick, but 
I do recommend that when things start getting crazy, that you keep it turned off because if you click on an artboard, it will show the links associated with that artboard. If you click on a group, it'll show the links associated with that group. So essentially, it shows the children of the selected object and what they are linked to. So things are way less hectic. You can also hold shift and select multiple artboards to see all of the links for those particular artboards without having to see the whole bird's nest all at once. Cause it's just, it gets crazy. It gets absolutely nuts. So this is definitely the way to do it if you've got a big prototype. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're new to Sketch, check out LearnSketch.com. There's a link in the description below, along with a link to my Udemy course on Sketch. And if you click on that link, instead of paying full price, you'll pay, I think it's like 67% off. So big fat discount for you. All right, guys. See you soon.